Hello. We are learning about untyped arguments today, like warfarin. Um, so these medicines are mainly used for the prevention of deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism. And untyped arguments include rifaraxaban, um, dabigatran with brand name Prandaxa, warfarin, apixaban, or the low molecular weight um, enexoparin. So these medicines. Are target the, the clotting cascade. Remember, the clotting cascade is like the complement system in the immune system um, where an activated enzyme activates an activated enzyme. So finally resulting in um, the activation of fibrinogen, which is um, inactive protein of uh, protein fiber, which is converted to fibrin. Then this fibrin mesh uh, cross links to each other, trapping some um, red blood vessels as well. So this is electronic micrograph of um, a fibrin mesh. So as we can see, there are platelets um, trapped within the fibrin mesh forming the clot. So if you remember, um, antiplatelets mainly are mainly composed of activated platelets which stick together forming a platelet blood. But here, uh, it's mainly fibrin mesh with um, some trapped um, red blood vessels and platelets. So if you target this um, the, the conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin, then you basically reduce the amount of time it takes for the blood to synthesize a clot, then reducing the risk of um, deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. So, the medicines, um, traditionally, warfarin was used to prevent um, deep vein thrombosis or anti uh, uh, for anticoagulation and warfarin targets vitamin K dependent factors like um, factor 2, factor 7, factor 9 and factor 10 so it increases the time it takes for the clot formation whereas the newer anticoagulants like apixaban or rifaraxaban target fa activated factor 10 whereas the bigotry target thrombin or activated factor 2a so um, if you target any of these pathways, so you block the, the conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin, then producing the mind, uh, increasing the amount of time it takes for the blood to clot. So indications for anticoagulants include the prophylaxis of um, embol uh, systemic embolization like atrial fibrillation, deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, um, valve disease, or rheumatoid um, heart disease or the treatment of DVT, uh, deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism or transient uh, ischemic uh, attack. So it's not every drug is licensed for all these indications. So, so you need to check the licensing of each drug to um, check which um, disease is licensed for. There's also heparin. Heparin is um, a naturally occurring large um, uh, chain of um, of carbohydrate or sugar it na it's naturally occurring and it's usually the body mainly uses it for rapid um, anticoagulation or the termination of coagulation so low molecular weight heparin are smaller chains of um, these sugar chains like, and it could be abbreviated by this acronym date like deltoparin tinzoparin and enexo Parin. So these molecular weights are long acting than heparin and, and they're also more stable than heparin and heparin is also associated with some side effects, uh, low molecular weights um, have produced side effects than heparins but unlike heparin the effect cannot be easily reversed you could easily reverse or anyway heparin is rapidly broken down in the body so it's very short acting so each one has benefits and some uh, um, problems so um, they are good in some way and bad in another so you need uh, to take that into account so if we look at the Indications mainly now it's used the low molecular hep uh, heparin or lo low molecular weight heparin because anticoagulants, especially the orals like warfarin, are mainly contraindicated in pregnancy. Uh, doses are mainly expressed in units like 10,000 units in one mil. Um, there's uh, this side effect I was talking about is the heparin induced um, thrombo thrombocytopenia, which is a, a low concentration of. Um, of um, 
platelets and it's very dangerous situation and it also causes hyperkalemia um, and osteoporosis and as we said it increases the amount of time it takes for the the uh, it takes for the blood for the blood to clot so bleeding is increased there's also high hypersensitivity risks um, and as we said low molecular weights cause less risk of heparin induced thrombocytopenia but they are not quickly reversible as heparin and they are not oral so you have to give a um, parenterally and vitamin k antagonists include warfarin phenindione acinocumarol the NOAC or it was first called a um, new oral anticoagulants but this name is old now because when these methane first came out they were novel or new but now it's called the non vitamin K dependent oral anticoagulants or direct um, uh, direct um, inhibitors of oral anticoagulants because remember they inhibit activated factor 10 or activated um, thrombin or target specific oral anticoagulants so call whatever you want they basically um, block activated factors like the bigotron the bigotron is um, as we have seen it blocks um, it inhibits thrombin, pilfraxaban, and apixaban also inhibit, as we said, uh, activated factor 10. And these are the the, parent, uh, the parenteral anticoagulants like heparin, low molecular weight heparins, uh, and so on. So these are the main anticoagulants used in the UK. I'm not sure about other countries. So um, typical doses include warfarin. Warfarin is a very complex uh, medicine. It's very effective. It prevents... Um, clot formation in the arterial side and the venous side of the blood but the dose is variable it has many interactions so um, when it's um, started it has complex titration dose from 3 milligram to 9 milligram so it's va because it depends on the INR or the time it takes for the blood to clot compared to people who are not taking um, Anticoagulants. Tevroxiban is a newer anticoagulant. It's usually a um, 10 milligram, 15 milligram, or um, 15 milligram twice daily. But it depends really on the, the indication, so you need to check each one of them. Apixaban as well, uh, the bigotron. So as you can see, the dose is very, it's a little bit um, complex. It's more complex than antiplatelets. So antiplatelets, if you remember. You just take 17 milligram aspirin daily so uh, and so on but here it's really 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 complex so you need to take that into account um, and as we said warfarin has many 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 contra uh, uh, interactions it, it, it interacts with uh, food like green uh, leafy vegetables like spinach uh, broccoli it interacts with St. John's wort which is for uh, depression uh, grapefruit uh, cranberry juice um, because warfarin is a mixture of um, two enantiomers R and S so they are metabolized by different enzymes so that's why there are so many interactions and also um, inhibits um, the vitamin K dependent um, factors so a lot of food contains vitamin K so making the effect of warfarin useless so that's why we have this complex um, interaction um, it's also smoking alcohol uh, broad spectrum antibiotics um, also uh, because broad spectrum antibiotics basically uh, reduce the natural bacteria in the gut that thus reducing the compression um, the uptake of vitamin K in the blood um, produce uh, causing the risk of uh, bleeding it, it requires frequent monitoring, for example, daily or alternate daily monitoring when it's, far, when it's first desired, then every 12 weeks. Um, you also need to avoid antiplatelets, SRI, uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, uh, selective norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors like duloxetine or vaccine, anticoagulants, unless it's essential and it's used um, in that purpose, uh, for that purpose by specialists. Um, as we said, it requires frequent monitoring. Its effect takes four to five days, un unlike heparin, which is fast acting. Um, so different indications are different INRs. So if someone has um, recurrent um, pulmonary embolism or DVT, so you might go all the way to INR 3.5. So the aim, 
the target ion differs for each condition. The duration also differs, but sometimes someone might need only to take warfarin for like six weeks. For example, um, just a single um, incident of DVT. If it's recurrent, then you might need a longer duration of um, of, uh, of time. Um, as we said, monitoring sometimes daily, sometimes uh, alternate days when it's first started. Um, and remember, clotting focus I mean, in the liver, if there's a liver failure, no clotting focus uh, factors are produced, so increase the risk of um, bleeding, so you need to avoid uh, uh, vitamin K antagonists. They're also teratogenic, so you need to avoid in pregnancy. Avoid dactarine, because dactarine, if you remember, is over-the-counter medicine, so you might easily um, give it to someone who's taking warfarin, so it increases um, the risk of warfarin. Remember, uh, dactarine contains mechanazole antifungal, which inhibits um, enzymes to metabolize warfarin. So um, you need uh, to be very careful with using enzyme inhibitors. Um, it's also um, for minor surgical um, treatments like dental treatments. There's no need to stop warfarin. If it's major surgery, then you need to check with the with the text and um, preference books and um, for DOAC, so direct acting uh, oral anticoagulants the same risk of bleeding is usually avoided in kidney failure um, so you need to check e drug monograph uh, there's usually no INR monitoring as warfarin but there's some data that come, that's coming out and newer trials which say these drugs are not as safe as they were as um, drug companies claimed first when they first came out so they might need to monitor um, how the, uh, the medicine is working. So no INR monitoring as warfarin. Uh, there's also yearly renal function test. Um, it's also important that someone does not take double dose of these drugs because it could increase the risk of bleeding. Um, it could be taken if the, the missed dose is more, is, um, more than six hours uh, before the next dose. Um, also, you need to be very careful with taking a G protein, your efflux protein um, inhibitors like drugs like Ramapil or Amiodrone um, inhibit the efflux protein increasing the concentration of these um, DOACs or NOACs or anti-fungal um, drugs like ketoconazole, uh, as we said, Amiodrone or cyclosporine, anti-azoles. Also, um, enzyme inducers reduce the concentration of these DOACs like um, carbamazepine. Um, anti-epileptics, St. Jonas Ward, uh, the tuberculosis drug, Pefamsin. Also, avoid taking them with anticoagulants or antiplatelets, SSRIs, uh, SNRIs, unless it's um, deliberate um, and it's used by specialists. There's no antidote for these um, DOACs, unlike warfarin. Well, if you take too much warfarin, you just take uh, vitamin K, then the effect could be um, reversed, but for these we have no antidote, so you need to take that into account. It's also teratogenic, as we said. So these are um, some alarm um, symptoms that we need to be aware of. If someone is taking a um, warfarin or any other of the NOAX or DOAX, if someone has an experience bruising or bleeding, anyway, any uh, bleeding, we need um, they need to seek um, a prompt medical attention. Um, also remember, the INR is a comparison between people who are anticoagulant versus people who are not taking anticoagulant. So it takes three minutes for someone who is who is not taking anticoagulant. It takes nine minutes for someone who is not. So the only reason I'm telling you this is very important that bleeding is taken very seriously. The risk of bleeding for someone who is taking anticoagulant. Say if it takes nine minutes um, for someone who is not, it will take time is three, 27 minutes. So you might basically bleed to death. So um, if we see nose bleeding or epistaxis, bruising, or um, if bleeding takes um, longer, then you need um, to stop taking um, warfarin.